Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled Excessive Rudder Inputs by the Copilot Tore Off the Vertical Stabilizer, American Airlines Flight 587, November 12, 2001. Now, there are three main causes or findings attributed to this accident, and I'll address those in just a minute. But I want to point out kind of the mood at the time, and this has an impact possibly on how... Uh, the pilot responded to situations. And I want to point that out because I think it, it may be a consideration uh, that's that's been lost in the, uh, the decades after this. You see, this occurred in 2001, just a year after 9-11, where terrorists had used airplanes as a weapon. And initially they thought, you know, this aircraft went down shortly after takeoff. In fact, one terrorist group actually claimed that they had a person on board with a shoe bomb, and that turned out to be false. But uh, there was suspicion it was a terrorist uh, event. Well, uh, that was fairly quickly uh, dismissed. But um, there was a prevailing attitude at the time, and it, it dates back to some of the issues with the 737 power control unit, the rudder power control unit, where they were having uh, jammed rudder input and rudder reversals, and we had some rather um, dynamic crashes of airplanes going out of control. And of course, the major cause of accidents back in this period were controlled flight into terrain and loss of control was number two. So this this is a big issue, controlling uh, the aircraft and losing uh, control of the aircraft. So um, when you when you were dealing with the 737 issue of the rudder uh, and crossover speeds and all that, and I've discussed that in, in previous videos, um, it took some pretty aggressive maneuvering to save the aircraft. Now, the other aspect, too, was uh, there was some initial thought that, well, we had terrorists on board the aircraft. How do we defeat the terrorists in the back, especially if there's an issue with hostages and things like that? Well, there was the thought of aggressively maneuvering the aircraft to incapacitate the terrorist. And um, my vice chairman, uh, Terry, uh, flew with a uh, Boeing on a flight test um, that uh, the results have been uh, kept close to the vest. They're, they're, they're kind of secret on what, what happened. But he is the only non-Boeing test pilot who experienced this, and he had to keep it quiet uh, with proprietary issues. But you'll see a picture of Terry here in the later presentation when I talk about um, in-flight upset recovery training uh, systems that we looked at. Now, the, 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 the three causes that were listed on this accident were the fact that the, uh, the um, co-pilot used excessive uh, rudder inputs and he went back and forth on this. The fact that American Airlines had a training program where they um, uh, stressed using very aggressive rudder inputs to counteract um, wake turbulence encounters, and that was deemed to be totally unnecessary. And the third one is the fact that the um, A300 had rather light feel on the rudder controls. Now, this uh, this aircraft um, took off from John F. Kennedy Airport on November 12th, 2001. It was going to uh, San Domingo in the Dominican Recu Republic. It was an A300B4-605R. And uh, it crashed in the neighborhood of Bell Harbor on the Rockaway Peninsula of Queens. All 260 people on board the aircraft died, 251 passengers and nine crew members, and as well as five people on the ground. Um, and as I mentioned, the, uh, the closeness to September 11th was um, considered a big factor. Now, as we all know, vertical stabilizers are very important on an aircraft. And you can fly, okay, as long as the aircraft is reasonably under control and you have other methods of controlling yaw that can get away from you, you can fly an aircraft uh, without the rudder, as was inadvertently demonstrated uh, by Boeing when they took a B-52 out looking for clear air turbulence. And you know what? They found it, and it snapped the rudder off. In fact, I, uh, I met the pilot who um, was involved in this flight test, the Boeing test pilot, uh, when this occurred. Um, yeah, rather interesting tale. Now, this flight um, took off from uh, John F. Kennedy, and in front of it was a uh, JAL Boeing 747-400, and it took off, 
and the Airbus, uh, American Airlines Airbus, was cleared for takeoff uh, one minute and 40 seconds afterwards. That, that's a little bit close, as we all know. Um, but, um, you know, they're trying to launch aircraft. Um, now, the uh, co-pilot was flying, and in response to wake turbulence that they hit on takeoff, he started to aggressively move the rudder back and forth. And the, the rudder on these aircraft are not built to handle that sort of side load and he ended up snapping it off here is a picture from a uh, uh, toll booth camera of the aircraft uh, descending uh, out of control when the rudder came off uh, they entered a flat spin and actually the force of the flat spin caused both engines uh, to separate large massive aircraft like this especially without rudder there is no way you'll recover from a flat spin and of course the rudder was recovered and this is a picture of the crash site now one of the things at the time was american airlines training program um, as i said there was kind of a mindset to be rather aggressive in uh, recovering the aircraft from an upset and that could have led to um, some of the instructors being a little aggressive. I heard that the, uh, uh, I don't know if it's totally true, but I heard that the uh, one of the instructors involved in this program was an F-4 pilot. And of course, uh, as we all know, uh, anybody who's flown fighters knows that the rudder is a very good um, tool in uh, controlling the aircraft and uh, actually rolling it. You can do very nice ro rudder rolls in uh, fighter aircraft. Now, one thing that was interesting, at um, Society of Experimental Test Pilot Symposium, uh, we had a get-together, and we had some test pilots, and of course, I'm fairly recently out of the uh, the Air Force, and I still knew uh, one of the uh, the test pilots on it, Kerry, who was a, a very experienced uh, F-4 test pilot, and he, he was active on the F-16 at the time, since the F-4 wasn't undergoing testing, really. Uh, so he's, uh, he's very familiar with the F-4, and one thing that came to light... Now, fighter aircraft are very solidly built, and we always kind of considered that unless you over-G'd the aircraft or you, you know, went past the uh, the uh, speed limits on the aircraft, you couldn't hurt it. Uh, but uh, Kerry, um, who was the F-4 test pilot and, you know, on the F-16 program now, uh, said that, no, you could actually put enough power into the rudder to actually bend the vertical stabilizer. And that kind of came to a, a, as a shock to a lot of us. I guess we never uh, put that much force in the rudder uh, or, um, you know, switched it back and forth to the point that uh, we would actually bend the vertical stabilizer. But he said it was possible. And, uh, well, uh, part of the test program on uh, commercial aircraft is they have to do a dive with full uh, rudder input up to the maneuvering speed. And that's what uh, John Cashman, who was uh, the chief test pilot on the 777-200 for Boeing, says, you know, that's what they do. They, they uh, feed the rudder in smoothly and do a descent. And uh, it, uh, it's a test point where you make sure that the uh, uh, vertical stabilizer does not uh, bend or separate from the aircraft. Uh, but he says nowhere in that test procedure is there any function where you do rudder reversals because you start doing that and i'm sure you, you, know, you can go out in your little airplane you start doing that and you can see that you can you can get a pretty good motion going back and forth and you can imagine that if you get aggressive on this you can develop very high side loads and that's exactly uh, what happened in this case side loads that were so excessive that it tore the rudder off now they when they recovered the rudder uh, there were aluminum attach points and composite attach points. They found the aluminum attach points intact with the titanium bolts, and they found that the composite attach points had failed and separated. Um, so they started to worry, well, our composite's not as strong as we thought they were. And they went back and they did some testing, and they go, no, they, uh, they were as strong as we thought. That's just the point at which it failed. Now, in, in part of all of this, there was the thought of 
we need to do some training on this. And I, I did the simulator, simulator training, and yeah, you're in the simulator, and you're not really getting the forces. You're not really rolling upside down, although the simulator looks like it. And yeah, you can put the control in. Maybe uh, for people who haven't been upside down, it might be good to put them in an aircraft where they can go upside down and really feel it. Um, the Learjet was suitable uh, for this, although it had limits that would uh, trip off if you got uh, exceeded too much G or bank in that. So in some respects, that wasn't the, the most uh, beneficial. But you could put a yoke in the right seat of the Learjet. You could put a side stick so you could duplicate all the uh, standard transport uh, aircraft and, and do some good evaluations. But one of the things we wanted to do was look at a wide range of aircraft uh, for this uh, sort of possible evaluation. And part of this, well, I got friends at NASA and it was kind of a, we, we uh, they put together a test program for me to come and, and fly the F-18 there with Gordon Fullerton, a uh, shuttle astronaut. And we were looking at uh, using uh, high performance aircraft as uh, training devices for uh, upset recovery. Now, of course, this is the end point. Um, and we did some other test uh, profiles on this uh, to justify the mission. Uh, but basically, um, you know, you're not going to uh, put out the money of flying an aircraft like this to teach somebody uh, to recover. So we were looking at other options. And CalSpan has the in-flight simulator that um, uh, a Lear uh, prototype actually that has been outfitted and you can give it all sorts of uh, um, control responses and you can make uh, you can actually simulate hard over uh, control inputs which is what they did on a flight and it was um, we were doing uh, various maneuvers and um, they put in a simulated aileron hard over and it, it was not announced to me and it uh, really got my attention and that's part of the startle effect too is you're not anticipating that you're going to have to do one of these recoveries so you got the initial startle effect and that can result in excessive control uh, inputs so um, that that's part of the issue there now the national test pilot school also had an air maki and this is the coveted backwards air maki where all the uh, uh writing is on backwards now i got the slide in backwards and uh, um, i don't even know where this slide is to redo it uh and my editing skills aren't that good okay it's in backwards that's me there and we use this the national test pilot school was putting together a program um to uh teach upset recovery uh, training procedures in um, in an aircraft because you get much more simulation. Of course, um, the thing is, uh, CalSpan could could put a yoke on that side of the aircraft, which simulates uh, more effectively the um, the control system you will have uh, for most transport aircraft, not all, as we all know. And they can also put a side stick in, so you can do Airbus too if you want. I mean, it was very uh, it was a very um, flexible. Uh, system that you could tailor but uh, it was also very well protected and it would typically um, when you do some of these maneuvers the pr uh, protections would come in and the guy on the right side which was the the test side uh, would suddenly become disconnected because the uh, maneuvers bank angels except uh, etc were excessive and and the flight control system says uh no we don't want to get the airplane into trouble so that was an issue um but i evaluated a number of different people's um proposed systems for uh, teaching upset recovery and actually wrote about it in the the, the uh, airline pilots association magazine in uh, may of 1998 um, that was three years before this accident and of course um, back then we were thinking that you know you you needed to be aggressive on the aircraft to maintain control because we'd had a lot of instances where the aircraft really uh you know was taken off with uh control issues so that could have led partly to the thought that you needed to be aggressive but uh, as they found out uh American Airlines was giving you wake, wake vortices uh, intercepts on like the 747. It was rolling you 90 degrees. And they later said, nah, that, 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 that's not going to happen. It's going to be 5 or 10 degrees. So that was an excessive response to the um, input or the response of wake turbulence from the 747 that uh, the NTSB said was, was not realistic and led to, you know, aggressive response. And uh, if you got a chance to look at this article, um, 
There's the uh, out at Calspan. On the right there is Terry, my uh, vice chairman, who got to go out and uh, um, uh, fly the uh, procedures that uh, never came to fruition. They, they figured that's not a good idea to aggressively maneuver the aircraft to disable the, uh, the terrorists. Uh, it was much better to handle it uh, through uh, enhanced, we all love, security measures. And so that's with the Calspan uh, aircraft there. And, of course, also mentioned the Air Maki, the Impala aircraft, um, the 328, which was which is very interesting to, to fly. It's the uh, first year aircraft I've ever done a tail slide in because normally you can't do that. But anyway, that's the thought on the accidents. The co-pilot is blamed for the excessive inputs, but he flew bas basically the way he was trained. And um, I don't want to say he didn't know any better, but he flew the way he was trained and he, he was excessive on the inputs and it, it tore the rudder off. Obviously, pilots don't go out intending to kill themselves. And um, I'm sure he didn't that day, but his control inputs that he was trained to do were excessive and resulted in uh, this accident. Of course, the NTSB cited American Airlines for their training program. And of course, it has been corrected and uh, they do not do this as aggressively. So anyway, that's, that's some of my thoughts on this particular accident. Um, thanks for watching.